I'm Colin, a developer at LiveRun. This is testing Mox versus Fakes. So Mox Fakes, what are they and why would you want to use one or the other? We'll take this in four sections, but firstly, you may hear people use these words interchangeably. I want to be specific about my terms. Mocks are typically provided by a testing library, such as Makito. They have a rich API, we'll see more of that in a bit. They allow you to specify behavior for any public method on the mocked class in line with your test. They also have special assertions that you can use, such as you can check that a method was called, you could assert on the number of calls of a method, you can also assert that no other methods were called unexpectedly. Probably their best feature is that they work with third-party code that you don't control. They can allow your unit test to check behavior against other libraries, uh, stuff that you can't easily instantiate. Fakes, by contrast. These are typically something that you write yourself. They're intentionally simple. They're barely more complicated than a simple setter and getter. They have virtually no internal logic. Any logic would complicate the test you're trying to write, and so you wouldn't want to complicate that. They don't call other classes. They're not meant to interact with any other fakes, whereas the expressive mock APIs can make that pretty easy to do. Asserting that a fake was called can be reduced to a simple public value on the fake without any branching logic. So, which do you want to use and when? For the following, I'll show Makito. It's aimed at Java and Kotlin, but the concepts are transposable into other languages. In this example here, we have a test and we're trying to assert that a navigator calls an analytics tracking method when navigating. The mocked analytics service is a real instance as far as the compiler is concerned. Under the hood, it's very different. Makito is using reflection and other tactics to create a fake object that returns nulls and has no implementation code. Our object under test, this navigator, will accept the mock object just as it would the real thing. You can assert that a method was called and also assert that specific expected arguments were passed in. And mocking libraries tend to have a lot of internal static or global state that's hidden from you most of the time. Another quick example, here a view model is reacting to a successful login. We create a mock login service and we need to tell the mock to return success. Makito's whenever method is used to instruct the login service to return a successful network response. Now the object under test is the view model. Internally, it will make a call to the login service. It will react to that click event from the UI. The mock will return a successful response and we can make further assertions about the view model, such as the state that it emits in the UI. Mocks are very powerful. It can be a double-edged sword. Whereas mocks try to make it easy to override virtually any object or behavior, fakes go the other direction. Try to have as little behavior as possible. The best fake is a no-op. Here, you see the fake login service defined in the test package. Unlike the concrete login service from before, this one is just the interface. Now in the test package, make a dead simple fake implementation for use when testing anything that depends on that login service. Do nothing in the fake class other than simple setters and getters. Notice that unlike the mock, you can't have a fake call other classes or customize its interactions with your classes under tests. Also notice that it has no dependencies. A real login service would likely require a network layer access. So time to write a test. Again, we'll check that the view model correctly calls the login service. So instantiate your fake set any values required for your case. In our case here, it's a successful response. Pass it into the class under chest, just like you would with a mock. Assert on the expected behavior of the class under test, in this case, that the view model has updated its state in reaction to that login. Now, notice again that unlike the mock, we have no way for the fake to reach out and call other related classes. If there were a chain of calls inside the view model initiated by that login service, the fake wouldn't invoke those. But that sparse behavior is intentional. If you need to test a chain of internal calls, it might be because your application code is overly coupled. It looks like they're less powerful and more maintenance. It looks like you have to create more interfaces that clutter up your application code. 
and you can't get very granular with behavior. So are these fakes worth it? So given the expressiveness of mocks, why would anyone bother using a less powerful and more manually maintained fake? And you'd be right, they are more powerful. The question is, what kind of code does your testing strategy encourage developers to write? I'll take it as a given that writing testable code is a virtue that you and your team share. In the same way that mocks allow you to interact with untestable third-party code, they also allow you to write untestable first-party code and still manage to write tests for it. Maybe it's nice to get that test coverage, but how does that affect the structure of your production code? Is your logic decoupled? Do your components have minimal responsibility? Does your test end up integrating many more function calls than exist in your class being tested? Fakes don't have a deep API, but they also force you to more closely consider your own. Your application code can't take the kind of shortcuts that a mock would allow. How would you change your approach if you knew you couldn't use a mocking library? If a test is hard to write with fakes, is that because of the fakes? It sometimes takes more effort to write a simpler component. It can feel fun and friction-free to mock out everything, but taken to the extreme, you may see developers writing complex test cases involving dozens of mocks. They talk to each other, and a distant assertion many lines down the stream makes it hard to reason about. Are you encouraging that kind of mess? Now, if you're on a small, disciplined team that understands the trade-offs, and you hold each other accountable in code review, then you can certainly use mocks and take advantage of that rich API. If you're on a large team where conventions and discipline are hard to scale, then you might want to adopt fakes as a rule. The simplicity of a fake is its best feature. My recommendation, start with fakes and strongly discourage mocks unless dealing with gnarly third-party code, though it's often the case you can still wrap third-party code and implement a fake of the wrapper. Whatever you choose, keep good test hygiene. Thanks for watching.